Hi, it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I want to show you Slavic Beauties by Christina Nowak and I'm probably butchering that completely. Sorry, Christina. Now this is not the same as Slavic Beauties, her colouring book that was released last year. This book is based on Slavic Beauties but it's cut in colour and basically what that means is that it's a bit like a paper towel project where she has four of the illustrations from Slavic Beauties and you colour in each different layer to build it up into an actual picture that you can put in a shadow box and display. So some people call it paper towel or shadow box art. This came with it as well and look at that little bunny, a lovely little Easter message on it came after Easter but I don't care the bunny's still good for another year and so basically you build up these layers and you can build this picture out that's got depth to it so I've done this before actually I did a video on paper towel but it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it so I actually deleted it but I'm going to go through and do one of these pictures in Christina's book and see what it uh, looks like. Now Daria's song she does a lot of shadow box art so if you're sort of looking for ideas you can have a look at Daria but there's a lot of people that do it or you can just go onto Pinterest and have a look at paper towel or shadow box art. So you get one complete picture and you can colour that in if you like. And Christina's got some instructions fortunately in English and it says basically build up the set of layers, begin with the background and then add the additional layers before finishing the project with a decorative frame on top. And you can colour them right away or you can cut them out into separate pieces first. It's up to you which way you, you go about it. She also specifically says that she didn't give any cutting guidelines. But you can cut along the lines of the pictures or with a comfortable gap around it before sharpening the edges. And they're all designed to fit inside an 18 by 25 centimetre picture frame. And you can use obviously whatever you like framing wise. Just make sure that you protect it because those little layers need to be kept safe, especially if you're dusting them and whatnot. So get one with glass in it. If you're in Australia, uh, Kmart actually sell these shadow box frames and they're really cheap. So you can buy special tape or foam pieces with glue. So again, if you're in Australia, you can buy double-sided tape and you just use a little bit of that. That's what I've used previously and it works really well. And she's got some other products here that you could use if you didn't have those. And on her YouTube channel, she's also got a video showing how to assemble the shadow box if you wanted to have a look at that. So on each of these facing pages, Christina also gives you a little bit of a history about the image. And we're about to get photo bombed by Millie. Oh, Millie. It's so nice that you're awake, darling. Come on, Millie. Well, never work with children or animals is what they say. Come on, Millie. Come on, darling. Come on. Come on, over here. So there's one layer with a tree on it. Cats, hey? Sorry, Christina, your book is getting sat on by the cat. So we would colour this in and you can see there's a little line here. This would be the background. And on the back it's been properly labelled as background. And then we've got the tree, the berries and the fruit and the crates that we can add as our next layer of raspberries, the fruit boxes layer too. So it's all detailed out for you. Now we've got our lovely girl, the shrubs and the raspberries. Which is layer 4B. And then we put that all together onto this frame. 
So if we go back to our first picture, we can see how that works, like you're putting the tree in, then the, I can't remember the order now, the girl, the fruit box, etc., until you've built it all up with all this beautiful depth. And you've also got that picture that you can colour in as well. So here's our next project and you can colour this in or you can add the effects, whatever you fancy. So here is our background. I love these stories. Then we've got our beautiful wall covered in ivy. Then we have our gorgeous girl and our beautiful leaves and animals. And again, she gives which layer they should be placed in. And then we've got our beautiful deer and our lady in the forest with all those gorgeous butterflies. This paper is really thick and sturdy. It's a heavyweight paper off white and it's what you'd expect for doing one of these shadow box projects because otherwise it would be too flimsy to hold. So the paper is really good and it's really important that you use the right quality paper. Now the line art is a dull black and some of it like the trees etc has a very painterly look to it which when you're putting these things in the shadow box They'll have a real depth to them and I think you'll want that dreamy effect. So here we've got our little bunny sitting on a rock with butterflies and beautiful flowers. And here's our little lady with the deer. And here are our layering instructions. And I think this is our last picture, which is the ivy coloured wall. So we've got our bricks, which are our background. Then we've got our ivy. Or rose bushes which is our second thing. Then we've got our girl on the balcony which is the final layer number three. And then here is our last project I think. So we've got the beautiful girl and she's got the head wrap on. Gorgeous bird. So beautiful grayscale on that. And here is our background picture, the windowsill. And then we've got all of our grapes and our little bird. Millie doesn't seem to mind photobombing this filming at all. Then we've got our headdress and our leaf. And you'll see there's no cutting line there, but you've got plenty of room on the page to cut those things out. Then we've got this gorgeous girl. I love the plaits in her hair. And it's a fan favourite, as she says. And you see that one everywhere, all over Pinterest and all over Instagram. And so here we've got our gorgeous girl on. She's got a lovely little head piece on there. Which is the golden duck. And another gorgeous girl as well. And these two, I think, were just some bonus pages or extra pages. There's no project to go with them. And so there we have it, the cut and colour. I thought I'd give it a go and uh, cut and colour and try and find a frame to put it in and see what happens when we come back. So I've got all my tools ready to put together the shadow box. I've got some scissors to cut out the pictures so I need to cut out these elements from the page. And if the scissors aren't going to do the job and cut it out, 
as neatly as possible. I've also got my craft blade and I have to say these tiny little uh, leaves on the picture really uh, really challenged me this one. I'm not sure if I coloured all the leaves and flowers correctly. Now luckily this is all on the page because Millie unfortunately has been walking all over my work so luckily the uh, elements that need to be cut out will all be cut out and her dirty little footprints won't be on it. I've also got some felt pads that you put on chair legs so it doesn't scratch your hardwood floors and I'm going to use those to bulk out the picture and then I'll put some either double-sided tape or these little foam mounts that I've got on the other side of the picture. Now I've got a frame to put it all together in. Now this is one that's got a glass uh, protector on the cover so I might have to take that out. But it was the only one that I could find uh, and this is from Kmart. So we'll see how that works. Now one of the things I had to do was write down the order of the elements once you cut them out because once you cut them out or I've roughly cut them now but once you cut them out the little bit on the back that tells you what order they go in you'll cut that out and then you won't remember so so I've cut out all my pieces and I've got to admit that uh, there were some sacrifices made I did lose a couple of leaves um, with my gun ho cutting and the other thing was that I made a few mistakes. So the first thing I would recommend is obviously reading the instructions. And also keep the reference picture open because I realised when I'd already done it that I thought the frame was this dark line and I didn't realize that this faint line on the side was part of the actual picture frame. So I only colored the darker bits and cut it all out not realizing that this which I thought was a page border was actually part of the picture frame. So my picture frame is smaller than what it should be and the other thing is I got a bit gung-ho with the cutting and I cut out the element from the background. So the stone wall I cut completely out rather than leaving on the page as you were meant to. So I had to get another piece of card and I thought well I'll just take the intro from the book. So made a few little mistakes in this project but you know we'll get there it's my first uh, shadow box since I was a kid I think I don't think I've made one uh, since so what we do is we start with the background and I wrote down where to position these layers now obviously mine's not going to be quite right because I got carried away and uh, unfortunately I didn't do as much picture frame as it was meant to be but you can see it roughed into position here what it's roughly going to look like and see how if I'd actually kept the frame as Christina had intended then all of these things would fit within it. Now I did contemplate copying the page and redoing the picture frame but I couldn't see where there was permission to do that so I just thought well it's just going to be a bit smaller and it's going to be my version of the shadow box and some of these things are going to get clunked out. Now the other thing is when I was cutting my craft knife was a little bit blunt and I feel like some of these edges you might be able to see once they're 3D'd so once we put these uh, little pads and the tape on it I'm not sure whether we'll be able to see this ragged edge in the light so what I thought I would do is just run a Tombow marker down the side just to color that in so I'm uh, probably just going to do that on the sides. Right my next layer is the roses and this time I want to increase the level to make it more 3D so 
as well as putting the furniture tips on I'll be adding a couple of layers of the adhesive tape just to make it pop to the front a bit more. Now you don't have to do yours the way I've done mine, you can just put the one layer between it but then it won't uh, pop out quite as much so I just wanted to see what it looked like. When I've done these in the past, I think it was called paper toll or something like that, someone can correct me, but you actually started with a picture behind it and then you put these things on top of it. So you actually coloured the reference picture and it was your background and then you added all these layers and each layer was higher than the next layer so they had more little mounts in between it. So I think uh, Christine only recommends doing like the furniture removal foam things and then just one layer of this tape but I just want to you know see if we can build it up and so it's even more 3D. And it's only a little bit more that I'm building it, it's only you know a few mils of this tape that is just sticking to everything. <laughs> Those little adhesive squares that I was originally going to use, they were such a pain, they just kept sticking to my nails, uh, so I couldn't hack using those. So. I went with this double-sided tape that luckily David had some in his toolbox and I uh, was able to do it. So now we're just on to our second last layer which is the balcony scene. And, you know, even though Christine has the recommendation for how the layers go, I think you can play around with it and do whatever you like, really. You can see my layers are already quite high here. Now, I might not be putting in as many of the chair protectors, uh, floor protectors, because I'm running out and I need enough for the picture frame and I don't think I've got any more. <laughs> don't you hate it when you start a project and then you realise that you don't have enough materials to complete it? So this one little protector's got to go around the whole frame. Now obviously later on I will add more to this. I really feel I need more to keep it sturdy and so it won't uh, fall apart in the picture frame. I don't want it sagging. But at the moment, I just need to make do with what I've got. I asked David to pick up some more from the $2 shop first today. Guess what? He and forgot. I asked him to get the double-sided tape, and he forgot that as well, but fortunately we already had some at home. So this time I'm adding three adhesive mounts to bulk it up a bit. So now that's got a triple layer of the double-sided tape plus the floor protection and we're going to pop her in. So you can see that she really is 3D now. You've got the background there on the layer, this is the first layer, then the roses are higher and then she's a lot higher as well so it gives that illusion of being 3D. And so the last thing to do is the frame. Now just remember what I said earlier, mine's not going to look the way it should because I completely stuffed up the frame and I'm wondering whether I should even use it or, you know, if I should just not put it in the frame and take the frame out of it. So I'm not sure. I might not use it. I'm going to have a fiddle with the picture frame that I bought off screen and hope that it does work out for this picture and see if, it, if I'll put the frame on it or not. So unfortunately my frame broke, including all the glass, so I've had to cobble it together again and sort of fix it up slightly. But you can see what the finished product looks like. And you can see that those 3D layers there. And of course it obviously looks more 3D in person. Now I still need to get some more furniture 
rests to uh, bulk out the ones that I'd run out of <laughs> run out of furniture posts for. But you get the general idea of it there. So there we have it, Slavic Beauties from Christina Nowak. Until next time, happy colouring.